a killer doll returns, Robocop hits the streets, and an interstellar alien war rages on. Several long-awaited sci-fi sequels are finally blasting off. Here's when you can expect them to hit theaters. Directed by Stephen Capel Jr., Transformers Rise of the Beasts will bring back the popular Autobots while introducing several new-to-the-films Beast Wars characters. Capel will be working from a script written by Joby Harrell, who was also responsible for the screenplay for King Arthur Legend of the Sword and wrote for Disney Plus's Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Transformers 7 will star Hamilton actor Anthony Ramos, alongside actor Dominique Fishback. Plus, Michelle Yeoh will voice Maximal Air Razor, Peter Dinklage will play the villainous Scourge, and Pete Davidson will play Autobot Mirage, replacing the late Francisco Quinn. The movie will take place in the 1990s, as the Autobots and Maximals do battle with the Decepticons, Predacons, and Terrorcons. Transformers Rise of the Beasts is set to hit theaters June 9, 2023. Within days of the release of Dune, a sequel was officially greenlit, with a release date set for November 3, 2023. Dune Part 2 won't come as a shock to anyone who read Frank Herbert's novel or saw the first film, which ended at what seemed to be a pretty pivotal point in the character arc of protagonist Paul Atreides. Dune began a sprawling tale of feuding households, political maneuvering, religious intrigue, and resource mining on the desert planet of Arrakis. Of course, not all the central players in Dune survived until the end, but those that did are expected to reprise their roles in the sequel. Also returning are director Denis Villeneuve and composer Hans Zimmer. As for Villeneuve, the director clarified that he considers Dune Part 2 the same movie as Dune, rather than a traditional sequel, telling The Hollywood Reporter, it's not a sequel where it's another episode or another story with the same characters. It actually has direct continuity to the first movie. It's the second part of the big, huge movie that I'm trying to do. Joining the cast for Dune 2 are Florence Pugh, who will play Princess Irulan Carino, and Christopher Walken as Emperor Shaddam IV. Austin Butler will portray the villainous Fade Ratha, Leia Seydoux will join the cast as Lady Margot, and Tim Blake Nelson is portraying an unknown character. Interestingly, unlike the first film, Dune Part 2 will receive an exclusive 45-day theatrical window, rather than the simultaneous theatrical and streaming release that the first film got. Come with me. While the nearly silent A Quiet Place stays entirely focused on one small family, headed by parents played by Emily Blunt and John Krasinski, the sequel, A Quiet Place Part 2, zooms out. That film brings the surviving characters from the first film into contact with a small, peaceful community that has managed to stay isolated from the sound-seeking monstrosities prowling the world around them. Now a third A Quiet Place film is on the docket, but Paramount is positioning it as a spin-off, according to Deadline. Writer-director Michael Sarnowski will oversee A Quiet Place Day One. Word has it that Blunt and Krasinski won't appear here. Instead, the leads will be played by Lupita Nyong'o and Joseph Quinn. Nyong'o posted a cast photo to Instagram in March 2023, revealing that Jaiman Hansu would return to the Quiet Place universe, likely reprising his role as Man on Island from A Quiet Place Part 2. I have to get back to my family. A Quiet Place Day 1 will be released on March 8, 2024. Everybody's favorite titans, Godzilla and King Kong have begun training for their anticipated rematch. The first film hit theaters and HBO Max in 2021, earning $468 million at the box office and impressing a fair amount of critics. The man in charge of the film, Adam Wingard, will be returning to direct, and this time he's teaming up with an old friend. Deadline reports that Dan Stevens will be playing the lead character. Stevens and Wingard previously worked together on the horror cult classic The Guest. If you haven't seen that 80s-inspired flick, you probably know Stevens from projects like Downton Abbey, Beauty and the Beast, and Legion. He'll be joined by MonsterVerse veterans Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, and Kaylee Hoddle, along with fellow newcomers Rachel House, Bala Chen, and Alex Burns. The script is being written by longtime Wingard collaborator Simon Barrett, as well as Jeremy Slater and Terry Rossio. But what's the plot? We have a vague idea based on the official plot description, 
which states that Kong and Godzilla will be pitted against an undiscovered threat. So who or what is the undiscovered threat? Whatever ends up happening, we're excited for the showdown. Warner Brothers recently announced that the movie's name is Godzilla x Kong The New Empire and will arrive in theaters on March 15, 2024. Following three successful films in the rebooted Planet of the Apes franchise, a fourth is on the way from director Wes Ball. The three films seem to reach their natural end with 2017's War for the Planet of the Apes, but now Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes looms on the horizon, with Ball saying on Twitter in 2020 that the fourth film would continue the legacy of Caesar. Of course, Caesar, the leader of the apes in the first three films, died in war. So where will the fourth film go from here? According to The Hollywood Reporter, Kingdom will take place years after Caesar's death, with apes running the show and humans as the lower class. While some apes are trying to live a peaceful existence, others are trying to build empires, enslaving their fellow primates and hunting for game-changing human tech. The story will follow an ape who stands up to his bloodthirsty brethren, as well as a human woman who will help our furry hero while advancing her own goals. As for the cast, Owen Teague has been cast as the lead ape, and he'll be joined by co-stars Freya Allen, Peter Macon, and William H. Macy. The script will be written by Patrick Asen, Josh Friedman, and Amanda Silver and Rick Joppa. Talking to Filmspeak, the latter two elaborated a bit on the themes of the upcoming movie, saying, Caesar created something and left a legacy. So then the questions are, what happens with that? What becomes of his legacy? I do not start this war. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is scheduled for a May 24th, 2024 release. An allegory about environmentalism and imperialism, Avatar was a visually stunning experience. Set in the distant future on the idyllic planet of Pandora, the film saw an Earth-based contingent seeking a rare substance and interacting with the indigenous, blue-skinned Navi. In the middle of all this, paralyzed former Marine Jake Sully fully embraced the Navi culture by way of his mental link-up, or rather, his avatar. From 2009 to 2010, Avatar became a worldwide pop culture sensation and the highest-grossing movie ever made. Writer-director James Cameron announced weeks after the first film hit theaters that he was working on a sequel, and later Cameron promised a third Avatar. By 2015, those plans had ballooned into a five-film series. Of course, such complicated movies take a lot of money and time to realize, and the aquatics-heavy Avatar The Way of Water hit theaters 13 years after the original, but audiences packed theaters as they had for the first film to the tune of $1.9 billion in ticket sales. In the wake of the first sequel's success, Cameron has dropped some details about Avatar 3, telling Deadline, Fire has a symbolic purpose in the film, and there's a culture that is specifically around that concept. You're going to meet two completely new cultures in the next film. Evidently, this Fire Nation will be a bit different from your normal Navi. Led by Una Chaplin, the so-called Ash People will actually be a villainous bunch, with Cameron telling 20 Minutes, I want to reveal the Navi from another angle because so far, I have only shown their good sides. In the early films, there are very negative human examples and very positive Navi examples. In Avatar 3, we'll do the reverse. Why did you come to us? Came to learn. According to Collider, the third Avatar opens on December 20th, 2024. Killer dolls amass devoted cult audiences by combining innocent childhood playthings with evil, murder, mayhem, and usually a little comedy. Following in the steps of Chucky, Annabelle, and the boy comes Megan, a high-tech take on the formula. In this film, a toy company's roboticist creates Megan, an eerily lifelike doll with sophisticated artificial intelligence on board. She's able to learn and adapt to make life better for the child she's imprinted upon. In this case, the roboticist's niece. Naturally, things go awry, and Megan becomes violently overprotective of her young charge. According to Deadline, Megan earned $30 million on its January 2023 opening weekend, far exceeding industry prognostications. Just days later, Universal took the early steps to bring a sequel to the big screen. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Allison Williams and Violet McGraw are returning for the sequel, as is Akila Cooper who penned the original script. According to The Trade, it's unknown if original director Gerard Johnstone is returning, 
but we do know that James Wan, Jason Blum, and Williams herself will be producing. Expect Megan 2.0 to arrive in theaters on January 17, 2025. Before John Boyega was known for fighting intergalactic space battles in Star Wars, he was fighting unsettling monstrous aliens in the urban sci-fi adventure Attack the Block. Written and directed by Joe Cornish, the 2011 film starred Boyega as Moses, the leader of a teenage street gang in South London, a gang that decides to rid their neighborhood of vicious extraterrestrials after they unexpectedly start falling from the sky. I'm chasing that down. I'm killing her. The sequel will reunite Boyega and Cornish, who's once again both writing and directing. This time, Boyega will also be acting as co-producer, in addition to reprising his role as Moses. Speaking to Deadline, Boyega said, It's been a decade since Attack the Block was released, and so much has changed since then. I'm excited to see this heightened story return to the streets of London. Moses has remained one of my favorite characters to play, and bringing him back is a huge honor. According to Deadline, the Attack the Block sequel will find Moses nearing the age of 30 and reflecting on a London changed by real-life events, like the riots of 2011 and rampant gentrification. Boyega went on, We go back and look at the locations where we shot the first movie, once dodgy areas, and we find that it's all gleaming high-end apartments and Starbucks. There's a whole world that we're about to explore here with a whole new take on that universe, building and revisiting those characters. Every few years, another Cloverfield movie comes along. Cloverfield sequels have historically been developed under code names and aren't revealed to be part of the popular franchise until their trailers hit the big and small screens, or in the case of 2018's The Cloverfield Paradox, just before the film hit Netflix on Super Bowl Sunday. All three Cloverfield movies are dramatically different from one another. 2008's Cloverfield is a found footage horror movie about a stampeding monster. 2016's 10 Cloverfield Lane takes place almost entirely in a bunker, and The Cloverfield Paradox is a space thriller. Considering this history of secrecy, it's likely nobody will know what the fourth Cloverfield movie is really about until just before it's released, which will be sometime in the next few years. According to The Hollywood Reporter, franchise producer J.J. Abrams hired writer Joe Barton to write the screenplay in January 2021. In September 2022, Babaka Varney landed the director's job, following his well-received work on thoughtful and unsettling fare, including Under the Shadow and I Came By. Almost everything else about the movie, in true Cloverfield fashion, remains a mystery. Adapted from the book by Richard Matheson, the 2007 film I Am Legend starred Will Smith as Robert Neville, the seemingly sole human survivor of an apocalyptic plague that transformed most of the world's humans into a terrifying cross between zombies and vampires. However, Neville eventually encounters another pair of survivors, a woman and a young boy who are both also immune to the virus. The ending of the film didn't leave a lot of room for Smith to return for a sequel since it saw Neville sacrificing himself in order to save the other two, but an alternate ending found all three heading to a survivor's camp in possession of a cure. What are you doing? I'm listening. According to the original film's writer, Akiva Goldsman, the sequel, announced by Deadline in 2022, would follow that other ending. Goldsman told Deadline, This will start a few decades later than the first. We trace back to the original Matheson book and the alternate ending. What Matheson was talking about was that man's time on the planet as the dominant species had come to an end. That's a really interesting thing we're going to get to explore. Michael B. Jordan is set to headline I Am Legend 2, along with Smith. However, not long after I Am Legend 2 was announced, Smith made headlines for slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars, putting the fate of several of his future projects in jeopardy. Since the release would likely come several years after the incident, it's possible that I Am Legend 2 will still go ahead with Smith attached. Despite the better part of four decades having passed since The Last Starfighter first wowed audiences, the time may actually be ideal for a sequel. The film was about a teenager who beats a video game, only to discover that the game was really a recruiting tool in order to find soldiers to fight in an interstellar alien war. Video games have changed a lot since then, which could present a natural way to continue the story. Speaking to Movie Hole, Jonathan Betuel, the writer of the original film, said of the sequel, It's not a remake. It's going to continue the story. 
What's changed is time itself, certainly as the video world and the alien world have continued to tick away. It's not a time capsule of the 80s by any means. We're taking it to the next level, passing the torch or the joystick. 900,000? You gonna bust the record? Betuel will be co-writing the sequel, titled The Last Starfighters, with screenwriter Gary Witta. In March 2021, Witta tweeted a sizzle reel that hints at the plot of the film. An alien attempts to assassinate an adult Alex, the protagonist of the first film, and Alex heads off into space to get to the bottom of what's going on. According to Betuel, the road to making a sequel has been a rocky one that's taken years, but at one point he was optimistic it would finally get off the ground. Betuel told Moviehole in 2020, Gary's a gifted collaborator. We'll be writing the script together, but it's taken a long time. I had to go through a process that took years to recapture the rights, but that was recently completed. And although nothing is ever clear sailing, it looks like we have a really good opportunity now. However, Gary Witta isn't quite as optimistic. In September 2022, a fan asked him on Twitter if there were any updates on the film. He tweeted in response, No. To be honest, there's a decent chance it never happens. But if it doesn't, it won't be for the lack of effort on my and John's part. Your move, creeps. Robocop is back. According to Deadline, the cyborg star is returning to the big screen, although it seems this new film is going to mess around with the continuity. The original Robocop was directed by Paul Verhoeven, and it made quite a killing when it was released in 1987. After two sequels, the franchise was rebooted in 2014, with actor Joel Kinnaman and director Jose Padilla. The latest entry in the franchise will be called Robocop Returns and will feature a fresh cast. Though Neil Blomkamp was initially attached to direct, he announced in August 2019 that scheduling conflicts had forced him to depart the project. In November 2019, Orion Pictures announced that director Abe Forsythe had taken up the helm of Robocop Returns. The screenplay for Robocop Returns was originally penned in 1998 by Ed Neumeyer and Michael Miner, the same writers behind the first film, and it will receive a rewrite from Forsythe. Of Forsythe's version of the script, Neumeyer had nothing but good things to say, telling Sci-Fi Wire, I didn't want to say too much about what the script should be. I wanted him to have the ideas and not worry about any other version of it, including ours, and just do his own thing. It was very nice to be able to say that to someone like Abe with confidence. What he came back with was really interesting. It felt relevant and really crackled. Mere days after the 2021 Chris Pratt sci-fi action film The Tomorrow War dropped on Amazon Prime, Amazon Studios and Skydance were already talking about a sequel. The first film centered around Pratt's character, who is recruited as a soldier to travel to the future and fight a war to save humanity. The sequel would reportedly bring back the entire main cast, along with director Chris McKay and writer Zach Dean. Identify yourself. I'm I'm Dan Forrester. The Tomorrow War earned an enthusiastic reaction from Amazon Prime subscribers, who viewed it enough for it to debut as the number one film across streaming platforms over the July 4th holiday weekend. So it's no wonder that the studios would be eagerly circling a sequel, although no plans are confirmed yet. And while we don't yet know what the story of a potential The Tomorrow War 2 would be, we have no doubt it will be just as thrilling and action-packed as the first film. Tron, released by Disney in 1982, represented a milestone. It was the first film featuring long sequences rendered entirely with computers. Jeff Bridges played video game designer Kevin Flynn, who gets trapped in one of his own projects and teams up with a software program as they traverse a laser-lit digital world. The film earned a modest $33 million and became a cult classic, so much so that Disney released Tron Legacy in 2010, starring Garrett Hedlund as Flynn's son, who enters the dangerous cyber dimension to retrieve his father. Tron Legacy performed well enough to prompt Disney to order a sequel, Tron Ascension. Tron Legacy director Joseph Kosinski had the entire film written and storyboarded when Disney canceled the project in 2015, according to Vulture. That third Tron movie project lay dormant for seven years. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Academy Award winner Jared Leto stepped up to try to get Tron 3 into production as far back as 2017, and director Garth Davis signed on in 2020. Finally, in 2023, Disney agreed and greenlit a new Tron movie titled Tron Ares. A direct sequel to Tron Legacy, the new film will star Leto, 
Yoshim Ronin, a live-action Disney favorite, is set to direct.